Welcome, everyone. My name is Erica, and as always, joined with Liana, the executive director of the Nonprofit Center. We're excited to bring you in this segment a little deeper dive into what you actually do as a board member. And in this video, we're going to talk about the role of the board. We're going to talk about some of the legal responsibilities of a board member. We have an awesome quiz for you to take to find out, do you have what it takes to be a board member? And we're going to talk about some of the individual responsibilities. So Liana, let's dive in with what is the role of the board? Board members have a kind of overarching responsibility for strategy and oversight. And that can be financial oversight, business oversight, management. Um, it's not really day-to-day -day stuff, unless your nonprofit is very, very small. But largely, board service is an oversight position. This is really something I had to learn as a board member. Uh, it's not like working for the organization. It's very different to be a board member. Really, it's, it's kind of about showing up for meetings, listening to how the board is, how the organization is doing, where they're going, and then seeing how you can be involved and help. Exactly. You're sort of a teammate to the executive director and the staff, and together all of you help move the mission forward. All right, so let's dive into the legal responsibilities. Like all leadership positions, positions do come with responsibilities. And some of these are legally bound responsibilities. So let's dive in. To me, the legal responsibilities are common sense. You have a duty of care, a duty of loyalty, and a duty of obedience. So let's break that down a little bit. Duty of care, competence, and prudence, you're expected to read through materials, look at the finances, speak up, ask questions, and be prudent. To me, that's common sense. You don't sit in a board meeting thinking you'd rather be somewhere else, right? You need to be engaged and you need to pay attention, right? Duty of loyalty, you're not in it for you. You're expected to act in the best interest of the organization. So you're not acting for your own personal gain. One example of this might be if you vote on something and the majority wins and that wasn't your opinion, you didn't vote for that action, you can't go out and badmouth the other board members or the organization and do a lot of grumbling. You have to present a united front. And then finally, duty of obedience, you need to stay faithful to the mission and the goals of the organization. So you can't stray for personal interest. You want to be as one with this team that you're working with. All right, so those are some of the legal duties. Now, what about governance? I always hear that the board's responsibility is for the governance of the organization. What exactly does that mean? So nonprofits are mostly governed by state law, but they also have their own bylaws. So when you join a board, you want to make sure to get a copy of those bylaws. Those bylaws might tell you how many board members are allowed, how often you meet. Uh, there are a number of things in there. But you also want to have an entire binder full of important documents that might be available to you. So you really can read through them and understand what governs the board. The IRS has some very simple requirements for a nonprofit to be a tax exempt organization. And that is that you have a charitable mission, that you accept donations, you're a public charity after all, and that you have a board and you meet at least once a year and take some minutes. That's really all the IRS requires. There's a certain amount of transparency that is a best practice. You are a public charity. People are giving you money, so uh, you have to be aware of that. But uh, a nonprofit is tax exempt, and you'll hear that term 501c3, and that's sometimes used interchangeably with nonprofit. It's basically an IRS tax exempt designation, according to the IRS code 501c3. And that means that not only do, does that nonprofit not pay taxes, but also that donations to that nonprofit are tax deductible. 
it's clear there are some responsibilities and any board member should take these seriously. But I think the other message is that you don't have to do this alone. The burden of this doesn't fall only on your shoulders. You are serving with several other board members as designated by your bylaws. And together, you, you are serving the responsibility of the governance of this organization. And a lot of uh, what you learn is picked up along the way. Let's dive in now to some of the personal responsibilities. And I'm really excited about this. Liana and I have prepared a quiz, a self-assessment quiz, that's gonna allow you to see, am I ready? Am I board ready? So if you have a piece of paper and a pen near you, go ahead and grab that. We're gonna ask you a few quiz questions, and you're gonna get to self-assess and rate how do you fall on the list of these qualities and these criteria. Liana, what's the first question for them to self-assess? People should think about whether they have the ability to work with a group and to listen to other people. All right, so give yourself a rating. Question number two, how willing are you to prepare for and attend board meetings and committee meetings? Just think about that for a second. Are you willing to follow through on assignments? Are you willing to uh, give of your time and give of your resources, open doors in the community? Where are you on your ability to prepare and serve? Next, think about whether you're actually interested in developing certain skills that you might not have. So are you willing to learn outside your own experience? And final question, teamwork. Where are you on the teamwork scale? Um, are you willing to be tolerant and sensitive to differing views, to uh, work with community building, to have personal integrity and a sense of values as it relates to the mission of the nonprofit? Give yourself a score there too. So those are some of the personal considerations, things you might want to look at and reflect on within yourself to see if you're board ready. But what about those times when someone approaches you randomly and says, hey, would you like to serve on my board? Or would you like to serve on our board? And you might feel like, oh, I should say yes because they asked me and you know, it's, it's a nice board, I'd like to serve on, I love the cause. But there are actually some responsibilities you might want to think about before you decide to say yes. So let's break those down. And Liana, I think we should bring back in our board members from our Nonprofit Center board to share some of these eight responsibilities that people can consider when they're deciding if they should join a board. Number one, attend all board meetings and special events. Number two, be informed about the organization's mission, services, and programs. Number three, review agenda and supporting materials prior to the board meeting and committee meetings. Number four, serve on committees and take on special assignments. Number five, make a personal financial contribution to the organization annually. Number six, advocate for that organization. Number seven, follow conflict of interest and confidentiality policies. Number eight, assist the board in carrying out its fiduciary responsibilities. Okay, Liana, so we've covered a lot of the roles and responsibilities of serving on a board. And it may seem like a lot, but I think it's also fairly common sense, and these are very accessible things to do. But by knowing the roles and responsibilities, you're now in a position where you can say yes to board leadership, which we hope you'll do. To learn more, check out the portal, find some information, and uh, we'll hope to see you on our next video where we continue to dive deeper into what it's like to serve on a board. Thanks so much.